Welcome everyone. My name is Mark Boney and I'm a teacher, um, author, and practitioner of the ancient art of Jyotish, the astrological science of India. And I'm here today to give you a brief lesson on um, what I'm referring to as advanced concepts within the Jaimini system of Jyotish. This uh, specialty branch of Jyotish was something that my teacher K.N. Rao went deeply into and something that I uh, learned from him. And so now I'm teaching the methodologies that he taught me within the system. Uh, currently, uh, my introductory course, The Essentials of Maharishi Jaimini Upadesha Sutras, is ongoing. But starting uh, Saturday, April 1, I'll be teaching a follow-on course to this, um, which I'm entitling Jaimini Level 2. Um, I believe last year I referred to it as Advanced Jaimini. But uh, to begin today's lesson, let me pull up a document here. Here we go. And, um, you know, if you've studied Parashri Jyotish, the Parashri system at all, you're well aware of a concept referred to as Yoga Karaka. This is where a particular planet uh, rules simultaneously an angle and trine house from a particular lagna, say Mars for Cancer or Leo. And this planet therefore becomes capable by itself without really combining with any other planets, particularly if strongly placed, say, in an angle or, tri or trine house. By itself, in that major period of that planet, it can give what's called Raja Yoga, which means it can give um, a certain level of success, elevation, status under the right conditions. It might even give uh, great status and uh, even great fame. So uh, the equivalent concept in the Jaimini system is referred to as Yogada, which literally means yoga maker. And um, this is something that I'll be going into in this upcoming uh, Jaimini Level 2 course. Just to give you a sense of this, it it's, can be a rather involved, involved concept, and there are different types and levels of Yogada. Um, but in its most basic sense, I'm showing here a sutra from the first chapter, uh, third part, 24th uh, Sutra of the Jaimini Sutras, the um, source text for Jaimini. And um, I'm giving here um, the transliterated Sanskrit, but then also um, my translation of that and interpretation of that. And essentially this sutra says, a Raja Yoga is formed when a planet is either conjunct or aspect, and here now we mean Rashi Drishti, signed aspects, not planetary aspects, when a planet is conjunct or aspecting three different lagnas, the Jamna lagna, which can refer to both the birth lagna and also a special lagna called Bhava lagna, Hora lagna, and Gatika lagna. So in Jaimini, um, various specialty lag lagnas are used. Many of you may have heard of something called Karakamsha lagna, or even Pada or Aruta lagna. So now we're hearing about uh, Jamna, Hora, and Katika lagna. And uh, the idea here is that if a particular planet, one planet, is connected simultaneously to all of these, either by conjunction or Rasha Tristi, well, then this forms a, this makes it a Yogada planet that is particularly capable of raising a person up. So to illustrate this idea, I'm showing you now the chart of a very famous uh, baseball player here in the U.S., Pete Rose, not a contemporary player, but he actually holds the record for the most career hits of any player in the history of baseball, um, was a, you know, a main star of a, a very famous team called the Cincinnati Reds. Uh, referred to as the Big Red Machine back in the um, 60s, and I believe extending into the early 70s. Um, and he was uh, one of the stars of that team. And um, in his chart, uh, you'll see that these lagnas are marked by their abbreviation. And it's rather extraordinary um, and not a very common thing. In his chart, his birth lagna, which is Pisces, but then also these three um, special lagnas, Gatika lagna, Hora lagna, Bhava lagna, uh, are all the same. And uh, this is, as I said, not a situation that you would find very frequently. And so the two planets in Pisces, which are an exalted Venus and then Mercury in its debilitation sign, but of course getting Nietzsche Banga because it's with this exalted Venus, both of these planets, according to the Chinese system, then become referred to as these Yogadas and become then especially uh, capable of uh, raising a person up, giving them success, good fortune, this type of uh, result. 
And, uh, you know, if you apply K. N. Rao's calculation of Chara Dasha here, his playing career would have coincided um, almost entirely starting with his uh, Taurus major period, which would have gone on for 10 years and then followed by the Gemini major period, which would have um, been gone on for about 19, uh, nine years, so in total of 19 years. And uh, showing his chart now um, with the Karakas indicated, um, you'll see that if you, you know, make Taurus a Lagna, which is how we use Charadasha, we make the particular sign that a person is running the Lagna and then see the disposition of the planets and the Karakas from there. Um, you, you should note a couple of things if you know, have any familiarity with the Germany system. First of all, the 11th house obviously becomes very strong. Um, because you've got uh, two natural benefics, one of which is exalted, one of which is Nietzsche Banga, and uh, they form um, uh, Jaimi Raja Yoga because it's the combination of the AK planet with the highest degrees and the PK planet with the fifth highest degrees. But also, you'll see that um, all the planets in um, Aries Sun, Saturn, and Jupiter are going to throw their Rashi Drasir aspect on the 12, uh, on the 10th house from Taurus, which of course would be Aquarius. And um, these planets also form uh, Jaimini Raja Yogis. You've got the AMK, kind of a real career indicator in the Jaimini system, and exalted uh, DK. Actually, both of these planets are strong because Jupiter is going to go into its uh, own sign, uh, Sagittarius in Navamsha. And then you've got the uh, BK Saturn, which is significant here because BK represents the third house um, in this system, having to do with sports and so on. So you see, um, starting with the Taurus period, um, how these uh, configurations from the 11th and then aspecting on to the 10th uh, indicate uh, the beginning of his career. I think he, his first year in the, in the league, he won Rookie of the Year. And of course, his financial status <laughs> immediately changed overnight. Um, as a result of, uh, of this, getting a professional contract. Uh, so you see the strong 11th house from there. And then after the um, uh, 10 years of Taurus, he would have moved into this Gemini period. And now those uh, planets in Pisces become the 10th house from there. Uh, these two benefics, and um, one very, very strong, it's exalted Vargotama actually, and they are these Yogata planets. And so um, Gemini, both Taurus and Gemini, proved to be extremely uh, favorable and fortunate uh, periods for him in terms of uh, fame and fortune, success, these types of things. So um, this is just to give you a kind of sort of a quick little feel about um, yogatas and how they can be utilized interpretively within the Chinese system. There's much more to it than that, right? but I'm kind of just showing you a very basic thing as it applies to the chart of Pete Rose here. The other thing that I go into in this uh, Jaimini Level 2 course has to do with um, Jaimini's unique methodology for uh, calculating both um, graha Bala, meaning planetary strength, and also um, Rashi Bala, which means sign strength. And of course, since the um, uh, dashas in the Jaimini system are signs, this idea of uh, Rashi Bala, uh, sign strength, is particularly important. And um, Donald Trump's chart, uh, current president of the United States, recently elected, um, is a perfect illustration of this. Uh, uh, one of the um, things given in the Jaimi Sutras, I'm not showing it here, but uh, something that is referred to as a secondary source of strength for a sign is when it gets either the influence of Mercury and or Jupiter. Now, of course, if it gets the influence of both, well, that's all the better. And um, some of you may be aware that um, Trump became president in um, Charadasha, at least according to, uh, calculated by the methodology taught by K. N. Rao, in his Gemini, Gemini Mahadasha. And uh, we see here that it contains um, Mercury, strong in its own sign, but then Jupiter um, also throws its Rashi Dristi upon um, Gemini and Mercury as well. 
uh, Jupiter's source of strength is a little bit um, not that obvious here, unless you take retrograde source as a strength, but it was a time when he, the planet was going from retrograde to direct what's known as a station point, which actually <laughs> makes the planet give its results very strongly. So here you have Gemini, the sign when he became both a you know, major celebrity, a reality TV star, and also the period when he became president of the United States getting the strong influence of both Mercury and Jupiter, who are also strong um, in their own rights. So the bottom line on this is that it makes um, Gemini an extremely strong sign and giving its results very strongly, which in fact, of course, we know that it did. So um, Kay and Rao has, uh, based on the Jaimi Sutras and the uh, methods given there for calculating Graha and Rashi Pala, he's taken those and developed what he always has referred to as sort of a workable method of quantitatively calculating the um, planetary strength for each of the Grahas and then also the Rashi Bala sign strength for each of the signs. And this is something, again, that I'm going to be uh, teaching in this upcoming level two course. So. Um, you know, I mentioned earlier uh, special lagna, Karakamsha lagna, another special lagna in Jaimini that's utilized quite a bit is something called the Aruda lagna, also referred to as the Pada lagna. Um, in his first chapter of the Jaimini Sutras, the sage uh, devotes uh, to, uh, actually probably more sutras than any other to, um, at least in terms of what we have of the sutras, devotes more than any others to the effects of planets from Karakamsha, giving some very, very fascinating combinations that in my research is, um, are very reliable, work very well. And I, I wanna give a quick feel for this here. An example of this, um, in the chapter on the effects of planets from Karakamsha, he then gives some combinations about what happens if planets, uh, certain planets are in either the Karakamsha Lagna itself or the fifth house from there. And um, he gives some combinations for, uh, that would incline a person to be an author and also um, how it could be determined potentially what their level of success as an author would be. And so you can see here from the sutras that I'm quoting, uh, the first one related to this, he says that uh, if the moon and Jupiter either are in the Karakamsa Lagna itself or in the fifth house from there, a person uh, becomes an author. And actually the connotation is that they would be a very successful author. Then he goes on to say that um, the Venus involved in such a combination um, would make one an author, but less so. And then Mercury also, um, but then that would be even uh, less of a successful author. Now, what we have here, of course, is the three natural uh, benefics plus the moon. So extrapolating from this, one can say that if you see uh, the influence of the uh, natural benefics, and particularly the moon, uh, either on the first house or the fifth house from this special lagna, Karakamsha lagna, this is the type of thing that's going to um, incline a person to authorship and make them a successful author. So um, I'm showing you now, um, first of all, the birth chart of the very famous uh, uh, science fiction writer, H.G. Wells, which uh, he was one of the most popular authors of his day and very prolific author. He wrote a lot, not just science fiction, but he wrote a lot of um, nonfiction as well. Quite an author, in other words. <laughs> and um, you know, you'll see here that his birth log is Capricorn. But if you find the planet with the highest degrees, you'll see that is the moon at 2834 of Capricorn. If you place that in Navamsha, it's going to go into the sign Virgo, which then makes Virgo uh, what's called the Karakamsha Lagna, as if you, if you apply that uh, Lagna back in the birth chart. So this is what I've done in the next uh, graphic here. You'll see here that now we've made Virgo the Lagna, it, it being the first house. And if we look at the fifth house from there, what do we see? <laughs> of course, we see the moon conjunct uh, Jupiter, uh, with Jupiter in stabilization sign, but also um, And um, so this is a, um, uh, so, and also actually, if we uh, look at other aspects onto the fifth house, you'll see that the aspect of Mercury, Rashi aspect from Leo. So you have not just Jupiter and the moon in the fifth house, but it gets the additional aspect of another uh, planet, another um, Karaka that inclines towards authorship, of course, which is uh, Mercury. So um, what I'm going to be going into is uh, many um, combinations that are given 
in the sutras, both from the Karakamsha Lagna and from Aruta Lagna. I'll be giving my original translation and commentary on these sutras and then showing illustrations, not all of them, but select ones. Um, and uh, they are quite, quite interesting. Uh, and you'll see that I've also, in my research, discovered if you apply these combinations dynamically, um, that you'll also find them working very well, meaning that uh, if you apply them not just from the Karakamsha Lagna, but if you apply them from the Dasha Lagna, um, I'll show how um, you'll, you'll see that these combinations are reliably interpreted that way as well. Now, I'm also, uh, in, in my introductory course, I teach Char Dasha, as taught by K. N. Rao, in the utilization of that Dasha. But I, you know, it's a beginning course, so I teach it at a, you know, certain level. In this um, level two course, I'll be looking at the use of this uh, Dasha, Char Dasha, the main predictive tool in the Jaimi system, according to the K. N. Rao approach. Um, and uh, again, I can use Donald Trump's Char to uh, suggest that. You know, you always have a major period, you have a sub-period, and then really events take place in the sub-sub-period, the Pratyantar Dasha. The major period represents a certain, establishes a certain theme, a certain potential. That potential becomes more actualized in the sub-period, but then the event related to that uh, will actually take place in the sub-sub-period. And again, we can use Donald Trump's chart to talk about this. I mentioned that he became president in the major period of uh, Gemini. And um, the sub-period was actually Cancer. You'll see that there are Raja, Jaimi Raja Yogas forming with regards to Cancer. Um, they're actually the influence of a six Graha, either by uh, occupation or by um, Rashi Drusti to this sign. And uh, combinations of the AK and the DK, AMK in particular and DK, these are all Jaimi Raja Yogas. The planets there are, are both um, of our Gotama. There is the special moon Venus uh, combination that uh, forms uh, both a Raja and Dana Yoga here. So this was the sub period um, in which he became president, but the sub sub period was that of Scorpio containing his AMK, which um, as I'm showing in this beginning course, signs containing the AMK are from where the AMK falls 10th, um, oftentimes prove um, very uh, useful in terms of timing when a person will rise up. And in this case, as a sub-sub-period lord, it showed that time when he both, he both won the election and was inaugurated uh, as president. So this is a little bit more of the, what I would call the advanced use of Charadasha, but also um, in my introductory course, you know, really the only divisional chart that I'm utilizing is primarily just the Navamsha, um, but then, you know, if you're using Charadash in a more advanced way, then you're also applying um, this Dasha to the important divisional charts as while you're looking at, you know, particular areas of life where things could be happening. In this case, of course, the Dashamsha or D10 has to do with power and status and position. So think about that Dasha sequence that I just talked about in which he became president. You've got uh, Gemini. And again, the idea is to use it as a lagna, in which case, look at what happens to the 10th house from there. Um, you've got the exalted benefic Venus, uh, you've got Saturn, there is a mutual glance with Mars, and these planets again form Jaimi Raja Yogas. Saturn is the DK, Mars is the PK, uh, uh, Venus is an exalted benefic following the 10th from there, so it creates a very strong 10th house when you apply um, Dasha Lagna to using Gemini, the major period when he won the presidency. And then if you look at the sub-period, um, you see that's Cancer. Again, the idea, use it as a lagna, in which case the tenth from there becomes Aries containing his um, AMK, uh, which I had just spoken about that previously. And so, you know, it even aspects the, the Scorpio, which was the sub-sub-period um, in which uh, he became president. So this is the more advanced use of Charadasha when we're actually applying these periods uh, to divisional charts to see what those periods can mean specifically related to that area of life. So also, um, you know, Kane Rao used to like to say that it's a poor astrologer that only has uh, one dasha. 
dashes, of course, are the tools that we use to see the unfoldment of karma in a person's life, and to try to see events and to time them, predict them astrologically. And um, I've mentioned that you know the primary predictive tool in the Jaimi system, if you're using Kane Rao's approach, is Chara Dasha. It's what you might call an all-purpose Dasha, which is to say it can be applied to any chart with respect to any event. But of course, there are in both the Parashri and the Jaimi systems, things called conditional dashas, dashas that can only be applied to specific charts because they meet certain conditions that allow you or enable you to do that. These are given both in the Jaimi Sutras and Parashra Hora. But then um, there are also dashas that are utilized to see specific kinds of events. Jaimi Sutras can, contains a number of dashas that are, that are identified as being Ayus dashas that are used in particular to calculate longevity. And so a, a dasha that um, Kane Rao teaches students that can be used specifically to see not a good thing, <laughs> arishta or misfortune, is uh, something that he refers to as Nirayana Shula dasha. And um, this is something that I'll be going into, uh, into the course and illustrating its use. I'll uh, just give you one example of this. It's not a happy, it's a very happy example, because again, this dasha is something that I'm using specifically to see potentials for misfortunes at a particular time of life. This is a chart of a, of a woman who was a best-selling author, appeared on Oprah a number of times, knew her personally, a wonderful soul, uh, but unfortunately, um, you know, in her 50s, uh, was diagnosed with cancer and fought it successfully for a period of years, but finally uh, succumbed. And um, if we were to calculate this dasha with regards to her chart and to see uh, which major period, I'll just focus on that for a moment, that this took place in, we would find that it was her Capricorn period. Now, um, the AK planet with the highest degrees is uh, like unto the first lord of the Parashri system. And so in that sense, it represents the body, the person, the embodied individual, and therefore has to do with health. And um, we can see here that in her case, um, from Capricorn, which is actually the birth lagna, lagna of birth, Mars, the AK, goes to the eighth house, uh, Dushtana. And then it's also uh, with Jupiter, the DK, and um, normally in the Jaime system, we would use the DK to evaluate spousal and uh, marital relationship types things and to time things like relationship and marriage. But as the planet that is the, um, has the seventh highest degrees and therefore is like unto the seventh Lord in this system, it also takes on the um, status of a maraka. Uh, so not a good thing here um, with regards to the kind of event that I'm looking at. And then, um, you know, see these two planets in Leo, the AK in particular, um, gets the aspect of Saturn, who's the AMK, but it's also Saturn as a strong natural malefic. And then the influence of the GK by Rashi Drisky, which is like unto the sixth lord of illness. And um, so this, you know, is what we call a Jaimini Arishti Yoga combination. And then when in Nirayana Shula Dasha, she ran her Capricorn major period, which would really be activating this. Um, Again, I'm not going into sub-period at the moment. Uh, this is when she got this deadly disease that eventually um, she passed as a result of that. So um, this is a dasha that can be utilized uh, to potentially identify dangerous periods. Of course, all dangerous periods can then, you have to be seeing them from different angles in terms of uh, the relief of uh, those uh, as far as um, the modification of those. It doesn't always result in something like you know, having cancer and dying. Um, and then um, another dasha that Kane Rao uh, teaches his students, this is be a conditional dasha, is something uh, called Manduk dasha. A very interesting <laughs> dasha that only can be applied to charts in which um, a person has four grahas. Now that would exclude Rahu and Ketu, not Chaya grahas, but four, uh, you know, four grahas that are falling in the angle houses. They can you know, be in any of the angle houses. They don't have to be in all four angle houses, but in angle houses. And you can see that this applies to the um, chart of uh, former President Barack Obama. Um, you know, back in 2008, when I was going to look to try to predict the outcome of that uh, presidential election, and I did predict that uh, Barack Obama would win, part of the basis of that prediction 
I was looking at it from in multiple dashes, which is the pre-approach taught to me by K and Rao. And um, I saw that in this Manduka dasha, he was going to be running uh, the major period of Taurus, some period of uh, Cancer. And that really struck me in a lot of ways. First of all, the, the Taurus is the fifth house of Rajya, or the authority to rule. That was number one, sometimes referred to by Ken Rao as the house of prime ministership. Uh, number two, it contained an exalted uh, moon. Um, and number three, you'll see it gets the aspect of both Jupiter and Mercury by Rashi Dristi. Uh, you know, I mentioned that as a, a becoming a great source of strength for a sign. And then also um, it gets the aspect, and this was pretty critical, of the AMK, but then the subperiod was that of cancer, the AMK, uh, which again becomes a career elevating kind of uh, combination. And also AMK is the sun, which of course, you know, is the natural significator of um, government. And actually I've talked about in this introductory course that when, you know, you're running periods or subperiods, the AMK, and also AMK is the sun. Sun represents, you know, a person's status and dignity, or high status and dignity, that, you know, these periods and subperiods specifically can, you know, really elevate a person. Now, this was what wasn't the whole basis of my prediction. I was looking at it in from Shotri. I was looking at it in Chara. Um, and uh, the three together, um, and what I saw then, really convinced me that it was um, Barack Obama, not uh, John McLean. I think he was the person who ran against that was going to become um, the president, which proved correct, obviously. And then, you know, lastly, um, there is in the Jaime system some very interesting dashes that are calculated primarily, actually almost exclusively, on the basis of the Navamsha, and they're interpreted strictly on the basis of the Navamsha. You're not really looking at the Rashi at all um, for interpreting these. And, um, you know, some of you may have maybe heard or know that, you know, I sometimes enjoy trying to see if I can pick who's going to win uh, an Academy Award or an Oscar. Um, and um, it's always a risky prediction because you can never get the charts of all the nominees. Um, they're all going to be running really good, strong periods, or they wouldn't have gotten nominated to begin with. But, um, you know, for the 19, the 2016 Academy Awards last year, um, not this year's, uh, you know, a couple months before, maybe two or three months, well, I, after the, the nominees had been announced, I was looking at those charts that I had, including that of um, Leonardo DiCaprio's. And, um, you know, I was looking at it different dasha systems, but one dasha system that I was applying to it was one of these Navamsha dashas, calculated on the basis of the Navamsha primarily. And there was one step that involves the birth chart, but then interpreted solely on the basis of this. And um, uh, it looked really, really strong to me, and I'm going to explain why. Um, you'll see that, um, you know, his AK is Venus, is BK, which is again likened to um, the third lord of the performance art, and uh, Saturn is his AMK, and I saw that these combined in his Navamsha in Taurus, and also um, they get the additional um, mutual glance, Rashi Dristi, with the moon, and um, so there's the AK AM combination here, which is very strong Jaime Raja Yoga. And Veen Munis, Veen, Veen, Venus Moon, which is a strong Jaime Raja Yoga and uh, Dan Yoga. And the planets involved, um, you know, have, have really good sources of strength. Venus is strong in its own sign. The moon is in its own sign. Um, and then I had seen that, you know, uh, the movie that really made uh, DiCaprio a international star was the movie Titanic, which came out in the late 90s. And I had seen that that happened actually in his Taurus major period. Um, so you can see how this Dasha, you know, times that uh, very, very well. Of course, that was a long period. I'd have to see what sub period in particular in the late 90s, I don't recall offhand. But um, what I was seeing now is that according to this Dasha, at the time when the Academy Awards were going to be announced, he was going to be running his major period of Leo, sub-period of Leo. And now use that as a Lagna in his Navamsha, and you'll see how all those um, Raja Yoga forming planets fall in the 10th house from there. And so this in coordination with what I was seeing in other Dasha systems and actually uh, transits as well, 
Um, I, on Facebook, very publicly, um, it, it sort of explained what I was seeing here and indicated that it looked really, really strong and I thought that he might win. And, um, you know, I was fortunate <laughs> it proved to be correct. But what I'm highlighting here is um, I have found this particular Japanese uh, Navamsha Dasha to be a very, very um, useful one to use as a complement to Chara Dasha. Uh, what you're always looking for when you're trying to identify an event, whether it be career rise, uh, whether it be marriage, or whether it be birth of children, property, whatever it might be, what you're always looking to do is to see identify periods in different dasha systems that coordinate that is their conflict they're all kind of pointing in the same direction and this is when you can see uh, that you're you can be feel more confident <laughs> that what you're seeing is is a true scene and it's if i've had any success predicting it's because i've applied this what Ken rao referred to as his uh, composite technique and, um, you know, it's useful to have, uh, you know, normally you're coordinating Vimshotri with Chara, but then if you can look at it additionally in another planetary dasha, say like Yogini, and then say another um, uh, Rashi dasha, such as this Navamsha dasha, then um, you can get a fuller picture or you can add, you can add collaboration to it. Um, I once heard Ken Rao say that when he's working on a, trying to zero down and predict a specific event, he would typically apply no less than four dashes. And uh, so this is the approach that I'm teaching within this particular um, Jaime level two class. These are uh, some of the topics that are gonna be covered. So um, just to just give you a little uh, more information about that to conclude here. So I'm now showing you um, the homepage of my um, website. And so if you go to that, and if you go to this box here and uh, click into it uh, where it says, learn Jaime Jodish, you'll see that uh, if you scroll down on this page, you'll see this announcement about uh, the Jaime level two course. Uh, you'll see here that it starts um, uh, this uh, sa this uh, on Saturday, this coming <laughs> April the 1st. It uh, goes for uh, eight consecutive weeks. And I want to talk a little bit about the course delivery model, since it's a little different than how I approached this uh, when I taught this course last year, where I called it Advanced Germany. Um, each week, each of the eight weeks, students would receive a uh, video presentation of about an hour on a particular lesson. Uh, accompanying that will be extensive written material that contains all the learning points and all the illustrations so that you know students can go through that in print carefully and absorb all that. But then also um, each week there'll be a our webinar. This will typically be on a Sunday morning at 7 a.m. Pacific time. This now will be Pacific daylight time. And um, here this hour will be about uh, Questions are going to inevitably come up when people see the video presentation or when they read the written material to clarify learning points and to, you know, add additional information about what the lesson was about. And even if a person that was inconvenient for them to attend live to that webinar, these are always recorded and then sent out to every course participant subsequently. So all in all, there's going to be eight hours of video presentation, eight hours of um, uh, webinar. Actually, I think I misspoke. It's going to be every other week for two hours, which is what the webinars would be. And then uh, the extensive written material, which probably would amount to over 200 pages, <laughs> which is like a small book. So, um, you know, you can go on this web page and you can read more about the, the course content. Um, but otherwise, uh, this is what I wanted to uh, share today. And um, the only requirement for taking this course, uh, well, there is a requirement, I should say. Um, the requirement is that a person either have taken my um, beginning course, the Essentials of Mahavishya Upadesha Sutras, or in some other way have absorbed, you might say, the basics, the essentials of the Jaimini system, either through their own study or from other courses that they've taken. But specifically, you know, obviously I'm teaching the approach taught by Ken Rao, which means we're emphasizing seven, not eight karakas, a uh, particular um, calculation of Charadasha. So um, if you have at least a, you know, a foundation in this, uh, you would also then qualify for this um, level two course. 
Um, anyone who has any questions about this, or feel free to contact me. Uh, my website, again, is www.markpony.com. In other words, I hope you've enjoyed this lesson. Until we meet again, namaste.